Welcome back everyone, it's Than from Tidal Gardens. Nano Reef Aquariums have been a hot topic for years now, and I wanted to do a three-part series on them. This of course is part one, so let's get right to it. First, let's get familiar with the tank that I'm going to be using for the Nano Reef. The tank is roughly 25 gallons, and as you can see, it's seen its fair share of abuse over the years. Although a little beaten up, the tank is not without some redeeming qualities. It has a back partition that acts as a sump where equipment can be hidden from view. The water from the display overflows into the partition through a grate at the top right of the aquarium. Now given the size and number of teeth in the overflow, it can probably handle about 3 to 400 gallons per hour of water flow. As the water flows through the sump area, it finally gets pumped back to the display through the small bulkhead on the left of the aquarium. This particular aquarium setup had an integrated protein skimmer. I'm a big proponent of protein skimmers even on small aquariums like this. This skimmer may be operated as a Venturi using the gray airline hose or possibly as an airstone skimmer with an air pump. Here you can see how it might sit in the back partition. Now that you have an idea of what we're working with, let's get on to the next step of restoring the equipment in the tank itself. We have some old pumps that have all kinds of growth on them. The best method we are aware of to clean darn near anything in this hobby is vinegar. Just about everything that encrusts on our equipment has some sort of calcium carbonate base. Stony corals, coralline algae, vermetid snails, feather dusters, they all build some calcium based shell or skeleton. A light acid like vinegar dissolves it right away. And the best part is, it is cheap and can be found everywhere. At the greenhouse, we have a bucket where we are always tossing in fittings and equipment that need a vinegar soak. One thing that you can do to really speed up the cleaning power of vinegar is to turn on one of the small pumps in the bucket. In addition to really cleaning that particular pump, it helps clean everything else in the vinegar bath as well. While our equipment soaks, I'm now going to take out the substrate. Substrate in an acrylic tank is a judgment call because on one hand, it greatly increases the risk of developing scratches in the tank. On the other hand, I really like the look of a tank with a substrate. Regardless, it has to be removed for the time being so we can remove the scratches and polish it up. Now that the substrate is gone and the tank rinsed out, we can clearly see the extent of the scratching on the viewing panes. You can even see a bit of paint possibly where the tank bumped into a wall while being moved. We're going to use a three-part solution designed for removing scratches. For heavily scratched tanks, you can even start with a very fine sandpaper before using the three-part. I'm not gonna lie, it takes a long time to buff out scratches in an acrylic tank. So while I do that, let's talk a bit about nano reefs in general. I think they're very popular because there's this perception that they're small and manageable while being less expensive than larger aquariums. I can certainly see how they would be an attractive entry point into the hobby. Now let's take a closer look at these three assumptions. Space. I can understand that space is an absolute constraint. Some of us just don't have room to put a monster aquarium in our homes. Heck, last year I found out that my doors weren't big enough to fit the tank that I really wanted. So that makes total sense. Okay, budget. Both tank and equipment wise, a nano is going to be significantly less expensive. I don't think too many people are going to argue that a small tank is going to be more expensive than a larger tank. Lighting alone gets very expensive as you add gallons to that tank. Lastly, the ease of maintenance. Now that's where things fall apart for me. The fact that they're small makes them exponentially more challenging. There's a saying in reef keeping that nothing good in this hobby happens fast. In fact, most things that happen fast are pretty catastrophic. Well, nothing in nano reefs happens slowly. Any slight change in temperature or chemistry is going to manifest in a very short period of time because you're working with a fundamentally smaller volume. Because of this, you have to be extra aware of possible changes like a dead animal and really stay up on your testing and water changes. If I were to set up a personal nano reef, 
I would plan to do very frequent water changes. Water changes, in my opinion, are by far the least expensive and most effective form of maintenance. On a small aquarium like this 25 gallon, I would try to replace 5 gallons per week. Okay, we are finally at the last stages of polishing up this tank. In all, it took about 6 hours of elbow grease. While that process was a bit tedious, it's one of the benefits of an acrylic aquarium. Scratches, even deep ones, can be removed with a little bit of effort. Acrylic is also considerably lighter than glass and more thermally stable. Let's do a quick comparison of before and after. I'm pretty impressed with the results overall. There were some deep scratches that really should have been dug out with sandpaper, but they're barely noticeable now. I think we're ready for part two, where I will talk about equipment and aquascaping this tank. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to follow us on Facebook. Happy reefing everyone!